As we prepare ourselves to start reading through the book of Luke to uh, just to kind of remind ourselves and refresh our memories of how Jesus interacted with people and with who he was, I just thought I would talk a little bit today about why I'm choosing the book of Luke. What makes him uh, the best choice for me out of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John? I think it's important to know that it's good to have a lot of perspective. So having the four Gospels, everybody has a different way of seeing uh, the life of Jesus and interpreting, you know, his miracles and his teachings and, and all that kind of stuff. And I mentioned in the first video that Luke was a Gentile. And so he sees things very differently because the gospel for him is different than it was for the for the Jewish people who, li who were living at the time. You have to remember that the idea of a Messiah was exclusively and solely a, a Jewish concept. It didn't exist in any other religion. It wasn't in any other holy book. It didn't come out of any other culture. It was exclusively a, a Jewish thought, a Jewish theology. And so Luke is coming into it uh, from a totally different background. And he's heard now about this Messiah who's come. But the Messiah he sees is a little different than the Messiah that many of the people thought he was going to be at the time. And so Luke starts to emphasize on things that some of the other guys don't. And a theme begins to evolve. It begins to develop out of Luke's writings that I find really, really fascinating. And th there's a few things about Luke. First of all, he emphasizes Jesus as Savior. All the Gospels have a unique way of looking at him. And, and Luke is that he is the Savior. And we're going to see not just for one race, not just for one nation, but for, for all people. And Luke takes a keen interest in the role that women played in the life of Jesus. It's very, very interesting. And then also about social justice and social outcasts and social structures. Uh, th th there, was, there was all these hierarchies and all these different levels that were put in place. And it was hard to move from one to the other. And Luke begins to show us through his gospel that Jesus loves everyone he doesn't it doesn't matter to him where you are on that social ladder how how you're ranked and so we see things and we find things that are unique to Luke's gospel they're in no one else's gospel and remember the theme of savior the role of women and of social outcasts so i want you to consider the following stories that are unique to Luke's account that means that no one else talks about it and some of you are going to want to go and Google this and say, no, come on, Matthew must talk about that or, or, or Mark or John. No, these are only in Luke. So let me give you just a couple of examples. Well, first of all, he gives us the strongest and most detailed uh, pre-birth record of Jesus. He really goes into a lot of background and he tells us a lot about Mary. And I have to re remember, Mary was a teenager who was pregnant out of wedlock in her society that put her right on the bottom rung. And we see that Mary matters to God. You know, women like Mary matter to God. And right off the bat, he's elevating people, no matter where they are on the scale of how society would see them. Um, Luke is the only one who mentions the angel Gabriel by name. That's kind of okay. Uh, he's the only one to mention Elizabeth, the cousin of, of Mary. In fact, he does it 11 times. Only Luke. Uh, he gives us a ton of detail about the actual birth. He's the only one who mentions a woman named Anna, who's a prophetess, when Jesus is brought to the temple to be dedicated. Usually only the men, the male prophets are talked about, but he, he honors, he recognizes, and he affirms her role as a prophetess. It's really, really cool. When Jesus stood up to read in the synagogue in Luke 4, it's the only time we hear that story. Luke is the only one who tells us the story of Zacchaeus, you know, a tax collector who's looked down on. And again, we see that these social outcasts, Luke includes them in the story. And he includes the interactions that Jesus has with them. He's the only one who tells us the story of a good Samaritan. Samaritans were low-ranking in, in those days, and he they're the hero in, in the parable. He talks about the lost sheep. He's the only one who tells us the story about the lost coin going after those outcasts. He's the only one who tells us the story of the prodigal son, that the sinners can come back, that the rebellious ones can come back. He's the only one who talks about the thief on the cross, that conversation they had. Again, a person who's, who's down on that social ladder. And, and Luke tells us the interaction that they have in Jesus as today you will be 
with me in paradise. And then even after the resurrection and before the ascension on the road to Emmaus, we have a conversation of Jesus talking to what I call lower ranked disciples. It's not the big boys. It's not Peter. It's not, not John or Matthew, but some unknowns. And, and this is the story that we start to see in the Gospel of Luke that Jesus interacts with everybody, with anybody. It doesn't matter where they stand, what side of the line or aisle they're on. He loves them, he interacts with them, he affirms them, and he honors them. And this is the Jesus that we follow. And this is the one that we're supposed to be like, to emulate his actions in our daily lives. So this is just a small introduction into why I chose the, the Gospel of Luke and in the next video, we're going to start reading through the Gospels, and we're going to really remember, I'm hoping, what it is to be a Christ follower.